If you butterfly in the Badger State, you're likely aware of the citizen science website wisconsinbutterflies.org. Today we're going to take a deeper look at this website and show ways it can transform your experiences in the field, connect you with other butterflyers, and allow you to learn the butterflies more effectively. Regular contributor Terry Mortier says, I use wisconsinbutterflies.org as my go-to field guide, noting that he uses the section for sightings to give himself a real-time statewide picture of which species are flying and where they can be found. Imagine you're interested in finding a juniper hair streak in Wisconsin. Your first stop would be the main page for that species, arrived at most easily by typing juniper hair streak in the search species window in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to go a different way so I can show you all the butterflies. They're organized like this. The little guys, like blues and hair streaks, are lumped together. Last but not least are the skippers. I go back to the little guys to find hair streaks. One click takes me to the list of all hair streaks. I look around and find the juniper and click. On the species page, Mike Reese examines general aspects noting that junipers rely on cedars. They also can be found primarily in the southwest part of the state. The weekly sightings graphic allows us to see when the butterflies have been found and their peaks of activity. Then we find sections on identification, similar species, habitat, flight, and abundance. Then Mike usually includes a section that can change, offering early, recent, or late sightings of the butterfly. The last element in the left column is a Wisconsin map where you can see the species status in all 72 counties. Green counties have photographic evidence of the butterfly, while blue counties, like Washera County, have a report of the species with no photos. White counties have no record of the species. A red county has a museum record, and records predating the website get a small black square inside of them. Some butterflyers accept the challenge of finding species in the white counties, thus earning an intangible honor of being the first to find it, which Reese recognizes in the report. He'll also credit the first person to provide a photo image in the county. In the right-hand column, several pictures that key in on upper and undersides, as well as the location of the photo, offer more information. For several species, you can also see sexual dimorphism if it exists. Clicking on any of the pictures enlarges them, something you can't do with a paper field guide. Many of the features I'm exploring require a membership. It's free and only takes a few minutes to set up, and Mike's not going to share your info with anybody. The recent sightings page is a goldmine of recent data that will allow you to see what's flying and where. Imagine that you really want to see an American snout, a great southern immigrant. Peruse recent sightings or use your browser's find feature, it's often control F, searching for snout and you'll know if anyone's reported a snout in the last few weeks. It's January so this isn't going to work for a few months in Wisconsin. Your browser's find feature also allows you to search for people, place names, other critters, and even numbers, functions not available on the website. So if you're trying to find all of Terry Mortier's recent sightings, the find tool from your browser is uh, going to be very useful. Some of the coolest tricks you can perform on the website are a bit more difficult to find. Let's say you want to find all sightings of swallowtails in Marinette County. From the recent sightings page, select the small option filters. Up pops an outline map of the state's 72 counties with a few boxes where you can limit your search. On the left, you can restrict the search to a time period. On the right, you can limit your search species with a box to tick if you want only your sightings. I type swallowtail in the box and then click on Marinette County on the map.
Now I know that Rory Williams reported a black swallowtail at Amberg State Natural Area on July 21, 2023, the only swallowtail reported in Marinette County that year. I can also figure out that Rory sighting was the first in over five years for the species. There's a lot more you can learn if you scroll down and check the history. Let's say I wanted to see all the species reported in Pepin County, but didn't want to sift through all the reports. First, I return to the starting page, click on butterflies, and check out the right column on the screen. Right below recent butterfly sightings, click on county species list. Select oddly shaped Pepin on the map and voila, Wisconsin's smallest counties list of reported and unreported species. Next time I'm there, I'll have an idea what butterflies to expect and what butterflies haven't yet been reported. I'll probably try to photograph a harvester or Edwards hair streak and get the county record. Now I'll show you how to download your sightings history, which you can view and analyze in a spreadsheet on your own computer. Go to the sightings dashboard, click on all your sightings, and then click on download your sightings as a CSV spreadsheet. While we're here, I'll also mention that you can look at all your reported and underreported species by clicking on the links below the box. I'm not focusing on spreadsheet use today. I just want to show you what my list looks like and some neat things I did. My first report to WisconsinButterflies.org was a single tawny emperor at Blackhawk State Park on June 18, 2010. By sorting data, I can figure out how many times I've reported a certain species, how many butterflies I've reported, to determine all the species I've reported in a given county, analyze my postings to see most reported species to least reported by sorting species names alphabetically, Examine data by years or months or a particular time range. Determine all the counties I've seen a species or that I've reported from. And analyze the number of reports from counties. Once your data is in a spreadsheet, you can really do some interesting analysis. Reporting to WisconsinButterflies.org can help anyone learn the butterflies of Wisconsin. More importantly, though, reports generate data that can be used to help efforts to protect the state's precious butterfly species. When more people monitor, we get more data, which helps create a clearer picture of the state of butterflies. I also recommend joining the Southern Wisconsin Butterfly Association. A link to our website can be found here. I return to the words of butterflyer Terry Mortier. I also get more tangible returns from filing reports. If I have questions about a tentative ID, I can get confirmation or correction from a trusted source by submitting a report. I also get an, an accessible folder of all my sightings arranged by date in a list of the species I have reported and those I haven't yet in, da in sighting dashboard. The driving force behind WisconsinButterflies.org is Mike Reese. To learn more about him, you can go to the Butterflies page and click on more about the butterflies, link on the right side. Reese offers some more general information about the site's history and butterflies in the Badger State that's worth reading. To see the man himself, click on About Mike Reese. Study that photo so you'll know to say hello when you see him in the field.